Hi everyone, it's Just James, okay? Here with another video, yes. Now, I wanna talk about something very, very important in pop culture to Heidi Montag. Yes, I wanna talk about Heidi Montag and her almost pop career. Now, Heidi Montag, for those of you who don't know, she was a socialite that was very popular in the early 2010s. She was on the show called The Hills, a show I can admit I have never watched. I've never seen an episode of it, but I was aware of who she was through all of my little gay friends in high school. They were obsessed with her. And I will say she had some bops, but we will get to it. Now, Heidi Montag had a dream of being the next Britney Spears. She wanted this, she saved up her coins, and she made it happen. She spent this on this album. I'll put it right here because I don't know off the top of my head, but I know it was a lot. And baby. Talk about a not good return on investment. Let's talk about Superficial and the journey to it. Now, she had released an EP and there were some bops on it. I will say like there were some songs on there that are actually pretty good. Like I love the song Overdose and it had a really fun music video. I feel like it probably could have been a lot bigger than it actually was. But when this album came out, it sold very little. But here's the thing, there's a lot that factored into this. Hadi Montag as a persona and as a socialite on television and everything, she was persona non grata, as far as you can say. Like, she was marketed as being sort of a villain on the hill, so she already had that going against her. She was married to Spencer Pratt, who also had a reputation of being a bully and a villain on the hills. So already not a good start to being a pop star, because if you're going after like the likes of a Britney Spears-esque kind of pop star career, one of the big things about Britney Spears was relatability and the ability to have like a girl next door kind of persona. Because when you look at Britney Spears when she first came out, she was very innocent, vulnerable, like really cute, really nice and had a great personality that was really infectious. Whereas like when you've already been marketed on a reality show as being sort of this catty, mean girl, it's not the best thing to go into with a pop star persona because it makes you really unlikable. Like, examining her career deeper, I feel like Heidi Montag never really stood a chance at being a pop star. The problem is, is like, you can be a child of good privilege and still become a big celebrity. Like, it's happened all the time in Hollywood. The problem with Heidi is that what set her apart from her contemporaries like Katy Perry or anyone else is that they were blank slates when they came out. Heidi Montag already had a lot of bad publicity following her going into her transition to becoming a pop star. At the time, she had a very public feud with Lauren Conrad, which was not looking good on Heidi. She was seen as a backstabber, a mean girl, a girl who lies on her friend. Pair this with wanting to be a pop star where your main purpose is to be there for public consumption. You kind of got to be likable. And Heidi did not have that going in her favor. And here's the thing, I'm sure Heidi's probably a lovely girl, but as far as it goes, all we've ever seen from her at this point was her being a snotty rich girl. And it's not surprising that people did not take to it right away. Very few people gravitated to this. Like despite the popular Mean Girls, people did not like Mean Girls in real life. She was convinced that this was gonna be the thing that was gonna put her to the top and she spent so much money on it. Also, sidebar, something that happened that I don't think a lot of people know about is that she had a song written for her by Lady Gaga, the song Fashion, which later appeared on the soundtrack for Confessions of a Shopaholic. Okay, so according to rumor, the lore you could say, the story goes that Heidi Montag had the song Fashion originally recorded and she was planning to put it on her album Superficial. The song is very good. It was written by Lady Gaga and a demo of Heidi's version had gotten out. Perez heard it wrote a scathing article, and Heidi then took it off the album. Heidi alleges this song was taken from her, and she really liked it and thought it could have done really big things for her career, and it maybe could have. In my own opinion, Lady Gaga's version is the superior version, and the right one got released. And given Heidi's popularity at that time, I feel like her pop career was dead in the water before it even began. Which she says she later regrets because it would have been a very big thing for her to be featured on that soundtrack with this song. Which, in hindsight, uh, yeah, it would have been. Like, that was not the move, sis. But Lady Gaga took it, and from there, she did more work, because Lady Gaga at that point was a songwriter working for labels and creating music. From what I understand, she was crediting this as being one of the big hurdles in her career that really hurt her as a pop star, which honestly, Lady Gaga was always gonna happen. There was no stopping that train, baby. Lady Gaga didn't stop you from anything. But Superficial, let's talk about it. She spent some money on Superficial. And I will say, like, listening to it again, it's like Superficial, the title track, it's cute. As a gay guy, like, I lived for it. And especially in high school, I really lived for it because I was a vapid little gay boy in high school. <laughs> like, a lot of my gay boy friends in high school were all listening to this. Like, they were obsessed with High Montag and obsessed with The Hills and The Kardashians and all that stuff. I took the route of quiet dignity and 
became, you know, an old Hollywood gay. For the most part, I'm not knocking it. People like what they like. I just never really was into it that much. I will say body language is a banger. That wasn't even on this album. That was on her EP. I didn't even realize that until I was doing research. I was like, I remember I love body language on Superficial. I think I got confused because it has similar artwork. Like the single looks just like the cover of Superficial, if I'm not mistaken. It's very similar aesthetic. It's got that great Yaz situation sample on it. Like, I'm surprised more artists haven't sampled them because they got some banger songs. But yeah, body language was good. And she even performed it on television. Like, low key, someone pointed this out in my comment section totally ripped off Britney Spears' VMA performance with a new delusion suit and everything. We know what you're trying to do. It's, it's safe to say the album very much tanked. It was a very expensive endeavor, and from that point, Heidi didn't make a whole lot of music after this. She later on released a Christian album later on down the line, but for the most part, a lot of her fame is generated from just from like publicity she's managed to get over the years. Like shortly after this, she was on, on a celebrity get me out of here where she and Spencer famously quit. Also made headlines for receiving an alleged 10 surgeries in one day. Heidi Montag is barely recognizable after a jaw dropping 10, yes, 10 plastic surgery procedures all in one yeah. day. This like for the most part, a lot of the attention that went towards her was not going towards her music. But from what I understand, she is married and has kids and everything. She's quieted down and she's not really in the public eye anymore. Like she's, she's living her life in Hollywood and not bothering nobody. But it is interesting to see like the resurgence on TikTok. I believe I'll Do It was also buzzing her on TikTok for a second there. And it makes you wonder like, had she released this music later, like if TikTok had happened then, I feel like it probably would have been received a lot differently. Because what I liked about Heidi Montag's music is it wasn't taking itself too seriously. Like it's very much in the vein of like a Kim Petras or someone like that, or like it's more fun. It's more aimed towards having fun rather than saying something deep or meaningful, which I feel like was a lot of the snobbery she was faced with, is nobody really took her seriously enough as an artist to see her as someone that doesn't take themselves as seriously, if that makes any sense. It exists as pop music just to be ingested. And that's okay too, there's space for that as well. But this is my thoughts on Hottie Monte. Let me know what you guys thought, because honestly, Superficial is a fun album. Like looking back at it, like she was tapping into something there and it's just a shame she was a little too early to the game at this. Like pop music wasn't there yet. Let me know what you guys thought down below. If you would live through this, let me know what you guys were talking about when it came out because I want to hear about it. The discussion starts down below. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share this if you can. It really helps me out. And until next time, bye. Well, it's over now. Click my next YouTube video. Like, comment, and subscribe.